Check the description for the following discount codes. Checking out another entry level cockpit today, this time the GT Racer from Next Level Racing. This is priced similarly to something like a GT Amiga Art uh, with a chair, the art you can buy without a chair. This comes with the chair you see here, £379. I think plus shipping. Again, this will depend where you are in the world. There is, of course, a discount code link in the description should you decide by the end of the video this is the cockpit for you. Now, some of the basic features we'll go through here. It does come with a adjustable reclinable chair. We'll do a close-up of this a bit later when it's you know on the rig. But I can already tell you I really like this seat. I like the fabric. It's soft, but also feels quite hard wearing. And the fake leather actually feels less plasticky than a lot of other fake leathers that I find on these type of cockpits. So I do like the seat. We'll see what the sliding mechanism and the recliner mechanism actually like, how much play there is in it a bit later on when it's assembled. But I do like it, I like the look of it as well. The Cockpit itself, as you can see, is a tubular construction rather than sort of the box section type stuff we see from GT Amiga. And there doesn't appear to be that many parts to actually assemble. Uh, we'll have a look at a close-up of them in a, in a second also. But it's designed for GT style racing, as it says here. It supports up to 13 newton meter direct drive wheels. Now, whilst this is an entry-level cockpit, that's a reasonably strong claim because 10 to 12 newton meters tends to be a sweet spot for a lot of us sim racers. Even something like the uh, Fanatic CSLDD that runs eight is actually plenty for a lot of people unless you really want a heavy wheel, you know, for those few of you that do. We will expect to see some flex wobble in this cockpit because of its entry level nature. Um, the pedal tray is attached permanently to the bottom here and this is interesting from what I can see so far there's no adjustment in the pedal tray and I don't know if there's any in the wheel deck either other than maybe some pre-drilled holes that I'll, again I'll show you this in a sec but we'll see once we get it built up so it comes with a shifter plate it comes with a handbrake mount and it comes with a butt kicker mounting pole as well so quite a few accessories already included. I think really that's probably all we need to go through on the website itself there. So let's have a little close up uh, at what we've got. Let's have a look at the wheel deck first. This is your typical pre-drilled two mil steel wheel deck, similar to what we would have seen on GT Amiga products. And when I mentioned pre-drilled holes, this is what I'm talking about at the side here. I think our adjustment is gonna be up and down and backwards and forwards using these slots and holes. But again, you know, for entry level, this is the sort of typical reinforcement that you would see, you know, nothing really at the sides, but it should be fine, um, at least for entry level top wheel bases, potentially up to 30 newton meters, as it says there. Interestingly, the shifter mount actually has a shed load of reinforcement, more even than what the wheel deck does. Because not only have we got these two braces that run through the middle here, we've then got additional tabs at the sides and they're folded and welded. So this is a very sturdy shifter mount. As I say, would have been nice to actually have seen a bit of that on the wheel deck, really. I'm guessing this is our butt kicker mount, as it's just a little pole on its own. Interestingly, does that look slightly off center? Maybe ever so slightly bent down one side to you? I mean, it's irrelevant once you pull it on, it will sort itself out. But um, yeah, I'm guessing that's your butt kicker. Mount, I'm gonna assume also that this is the shifter mount. Now what's interesting here is the actual plate itself was super reinforced. This is just a piece of tube. So there might be some flex in this. Again though, entry level cockpit, flex is expected and of course perfectly fine. So the tubular construction itself, in fact it's just the same as what the shift amount was really, but you may as well take a little peek at this. I, I'm going to estimate this to be one inch tube, I would guess. I haven't measured it, but we'll see how it does. You know, and tubular construction cockpits often look quite a bit nicer 
in some people's eyes than what box section does. I mean, to me, it's, it's either or. I quite like the design of the base here with the GT Racer logo on the side. Uh, and the pedal tray, as I say, it is fixed here. It's pre-slotted and pre-drilled. And we have got the corners bent down and welded for some rigidity. On the underside, we have those two tubes running down the middle there, again, for support in the center. So really, it's only the, and of course, it is also fixed along the bottom here. So it's only really these two top corners that are unsupported. But I don't think we're gonna get a huge amount of flex from there because I imagine most of the force brake pedal is gonna be in the center, which is properly reinforced with these tubes. So we shouldn't get any flex there at all. You don't press your accelerator pedal, which would be like that hard, and your clutch pedal either. You know, it's really the brake pedal. So of all the places to put the reinforcement, they've got it in the right place. I like that. Aside from this, um, oh, this is the universal handbrake mount. Again, it's just another plate that's pre-drilled and pre-slotted. You could probably put all sorts of other things on there, aside from a handbrake if you wanted to. Comes with a bag of nuts, bolts, spanners and Allen keys. And speaking of bags of nuts and bolts, we have a few of those here. I'm not gonna tip them all out on the floor, but just so you can see, we do have them. Again, comes with a tool kit. So I will be using the included tool kit to get the full retail experience. And we get a little next level racing lanyard as well. Nothing to do with the cockpit, but just um, a nice little accessory. The only other thing here really to show you is the instructions. I'm going to assume this is in different languages. It is, so... Oh, actually, half, a good half of it is, is in English. So we'll give you a little look. Pre-race pre checks, that's interesting. I've seen that before. A list of what's in the box. Mounting hole locations on the wheel plate. And then eventually mounting hole locations on the pedal plate. Color-coded to whatever product you happen to be trying to fit, which is quite nice. Actually, that's a really nice touch because then you don't have to guess which holes to use. Uh, and then eventually we get going with the installation itself and there is a QR uh, code link there for a video build guide. So that looks pretty comprehensive. Next Level Racing have always been good with their instructions um, from my experience. And their tools, nuts and bolts always tend to be a little bit higher quality than some of the others in the market as well. So I don't anticipate any problems putting this together. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do now. Oh, the only other thing we have here is this nice little Next Level Racing GT Racer trim piece, I'm gonna call this. Um, and if you just see it on the screen in the background here, every now and then, it just goes down the front of the tubular section that I held up closer to you earlier. Nice little finishing touch, I quite like that idea. So, I think that's pretty much everything. Let's spend an hour or so getting it all assembled and then we'll have a little close up look around. Very straightforward assembly of this next level racing GT racer. Probably took me maybe an hour, something like that. Uh, I used all the tools that came with it. No real issues with those. You could do with some slightly longer Allen keys because you can't get a lot of torque on, on those particular ones. They're quite small. And there's a couple of peculiarities with this uh, assembly, shall we say, that we'll get to when I do the close-up walk around. Um, but otherwise, yes, it all went together fine 
no issues there. You have to, you do have to kind of bend things around a little bit with this tubular setup to get bolt holes to align properly for the bolts to slot through. There's a little bit of sort of bendage and we not, not bendage, but you know what I mean, just a little bit of force required occasionally to get things to line up. Um, but otherwise, yeah, no, no issues. There's quite a few uh, nuts and bolts on the floor here that you'll see, and that's because I'm yet to bolt the wheel deck down because I'm going to put my wheelbase on this first and then decide whether I need it up, down, left or right before I bolt it in place. There's no point bolting it on, only to take it off again, but that is where it will sit. So yeah, assembly was easy, didn't take particularly long. Let's grab a camera and do a close-up walk around and just show you some of the features and a couple of peculiarities that I come across whilst installing this. As far as the appearance goes, I think it looks quite nice. It's a, a very compact cockpit, which I know to some people is important, like the footprint isn't particularly big. If you look, the, the actual footprint of the cockpit is narrower than the seat itself. And that isn't something you come across hugely often. So, you know, it looks quite nice. The tubular aspect is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than sort of box section or aluminium profile. And I like the GT Racer sort of body panel down the front there. And I do like the way this seat looks. As I say, the, the PU leather or polyurethane, the plastic is of decent quality. Uh, and this sort of plusher material in the middle is soft, but at the same time feels like it'll be quite hard wearing. So I do like the seat, the shape and the design of the seat. I like the Next Level Racing logo on the front here. This is obviously our handle for sliding it forwards and backwards. Oh, you can just see the butt kick come out there. It can be mounted more toward the rear as well, but I just put it in the center. Because if you're only gonna run one butt kicker, you want it in the center. Anyway, um, as I mentioned, this is the wheel deck. We've got an array of bolt holes either side here for this to bolt to. And because this is slotted and hold, you'll be able to adjust it up, down, forward, backward and tilt a little bit as well. No other adjustment as far as height of this section goes. These support brackets can be moved from here incrementally backwards using the same holes as I pointed out a second ago and then using these holes along here. And apparently you adjust that depending on your height. So a shorter person would have a more toward the front which makes sense, they're not in, they're not in the way of your legs then because you'll be a bit nearer to get to your pedals. Now, as I mentioned, there is no adjustment in the pedal tray, none whatsoever. So if you don't like an angled pedal tray, which I actually don't, um, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change that at all. It is, of course, slotted, so you can move your pedals up and down, but no other, you know, no height adjustment, no angle adjustment, which is a little unusual even for an entry level cockpit. And actually the same goes for the seat. There's no height adjustment for the seat either. It's just fixed at the height you see here. Now talking of seat um, adjustment or installation, here's our first peculiarity. The instructions tell you to use these wing nuts to bolt, why won't it focus? To bolt the seat on, there we go. One there and of course one there and the same on the other side. Now the issue with this is first of all, why do you want wing nuts? What's wrong with normal nuts that you can put a spanner on? Wing nuts are typically used somewhere where you may need to undo them frequently. But seeing as there's no adjustment here, there's no other bolt holes, there's no slots, the use of wing nuts is a very peculiar choice. The other thing is, these are M6 bolts and wing nuts, and the holes that they go through are M8, and they're slotted. So, I don't know if you'll see it, if I can get it to focus on this one, for some reason it wants to focus on my carpet, in the background, that wing nut is actually sunk into the hole a little bit because the hole is bigger than what the wing nut is. So that is odd. Yes, it could be cool by putting a washer on there and I have got plenty of washers spare, but I've done it as per the instructions and I did double check the instructions. They do not specify the use of washers under these wing nuts. That is peculiar. But I mean, it works, the seat is attached. I personally would use M8 bolts instead with normal nuts on because that's just odd. You can't do them that tight either. That's the other problem because even if you're using your Allen key on the underside on the head of the bolt, you're trying to hold this wing nut with your fingers and it's just it's digging into your fingers. You can't do it that tight. Very strange choice to do that but it is what it is. So then let's have a peek around the back and uh, there's nothing really to see here just the back of the seat and the bottom 
of the rig itself. Get around this side, we've got a, <laughs> a second peculiarity, which is a label on the reclining lever saying, do not touch. Well, <laughs> if I don't touch my reclining lever, how can I recline the seat? Bit of a strange one. Maybe it's referring to the screw that holds this on, I don't know, but there's just a label there saying, do not touch. I found that quite amusing. The label here is saying, pinch point, watch your hand. Okay, that makes sense. Um, because you know the mechanism does move, you might pinch your fingers, but do not touch on the lever that you absolutely have to touch. Bit of a strange one. Also, there's a, a screw behind there that I had to put in to hold this cover. So that tells you not to touch it, the instructions can tell you to touch it. I just found that quite um, conflicting and at the same time entertaining. Again, same scenario with your uh, wing nuts there. Shift them out here, as I say, the shift them out itself, very solid. The reason it has the reinforcements down the middle is because this tube runs through the center and the bolts go through laterally. Uh, there is then one from the top as well, which stops it flapping around on this tube. You've got various height adjustment here using the pre-drilled holes in the side that you can see, so that can go up and down. You could, in theory, even rotate it around, but I don't know why you'd do that. But yeah, this seems reasonably solid. In fact, it seems perfectly fine for, I have to keep remembering, it's an entry-level cockpit. So it's perfectly fine for an entry-level cockpit. There's a little bit of flex. There's nothing really in the way of up or down, but a little bit of side to side. Perfectly acceptable for the price point. So yeah, that's pretty much everything with regards to looking at the cockpit itself. You know, lacking a few adjustments, that you might find on other entry level cockpits, uh, the likes of the GT Amiga Art, for example, you can adjust the angle of the pedal tray and you can raise and lower the seat. That also has some um, integrated monitor mount stands. But um, it is a nice, slim and aesthetically pleasing cockpit, I would say, which is always nice. But yeah, let's get some sim racing equipment bolted on and uh, see what she drives like. So what do I think of this next ever racing GT racer as an entry level cockpit? I think it's got some pros and some cons. The pros primarily for me are the small footprint and the aesthetic nature of it. It's tubular design, the way the seat looks. It's a nice looking little cockpit, this sort of body panel down the front there. I like the way it looks. The price puts it bang in line with the GT Amiga Art, literally exactly the same price with a seat, £379. Um, there may be delivery on top of that with Next Level Racing that isn't for the Art. Um, Performance-wise, uh, there'll be a clip up now, in fact, uh, already running, of me using it. And I couldn't really feel any flex in this footage that you see here whilst I was using it. The, Direct drive wheelbase from Fnatic is turned up to the full eight Newton meters, uh, which is, this is gonna be your typical sort of wheelbase or less that you're gonna be using on a cockpit like this. If you can afford a wheelbase that's a thousand pounds, you're probably not running a 380 pound cockpit, are you? So um, it's a good indication, a good, a good test unit of a, of a typical real life um, use case scenario. And as I say, I didn't notice anything in use that would put me off of driving, racing, or recommending the cockpit from a flex point of view. You may see some in the video footage that I didn't feel, because a lot of the times when you're racing, you don't always notice things that are visible from an outsider's point of view. A good example of this is this seat. It actually flexes backwards a reasonable amount, and it's not, like, I don't think it's, the, I can't tell if it's the seat itself or if it's where it's bolted to the cockpit. I mean, looking at the cockpit, it shouldn't really be that because that can't be flexed. And so it must be the seat itself. But either way, it almost feels um, a bit like it's got a sprung back and it wants to kind of bounce me up and down a little bit. In fact, I'll, I'll come away from the driving footage now and just show you. If I, if I kind of just ping myself back, I'm very much sprung forward, and I've never felt anything quite like it in another cockpit. It, there's always play in the upright sections of chairs with adjustable rake. There has to be for the mechanism to work. But this is, like I said, it's like I'm being, it's like I'm being sprung. It reminds me of, if you've ever been to a kid's playground 
and you sit on one of those little cars or aeroplanes that's on a big coil spring and you bounce forwards and backwards and side to side. This doesn't go side to side, but it feels a little, it reminds me a little bit, I'm exaggerating obviously, but it reminds me a little bit of that sort of feeling. Now again, I didn't notice it when driving, um, but if I depress the brake pedal now, you'll see, and I can see in the footage there, the seat moving back quite a bit under braking. Now, of course, that is gonna be rep repetitive and consistent. It will do the same amount every time, so you'll gain a muscle memory for it. And it's an entry-level cockpit, so things like flex and wobble are to be expected. So, you know, that is what it is. You're not paying for a aluminium profile cockpit that's 700 pound and rock solid. That's, you know, literally twice the price. The other thing I noticed under hard braking is we are getting lift in the center here where it joins. I don't know whether that will show up. I don't have to press particularly hard for it to lift off the floor. If I go extreme, then you can see, look, we get a good one inch gap off the floor. Now, again, the GT Amiga R also suffers with this if you don't have it on casters. When you have it on casters, it doesn't do it, at least it didn't for me. And I'm using this, I think an eight or 90 kilogram low cell brake pedal. So again, to be expected at the price point, but really what we're using here, these pedals, they're, they're cheap pedals. They are low cell, but they're cheap. This is a entry level um, direct drive wheelbase it's the sort of stuff you might find yourself using on a cockpit like this. Again, this can be cured by reducing how hard you have to press the brake pedal to eliminate that. But even with a light press, there is a little bit and the seat moves. Again, it's an entry level cockpit. Am I being too harsh? Probably not, uh, probably, sorry, because the GT Amiga Art also suffers with some of these same things. We're not paying a lot of money compared to you know a rock solid, cockpit like the GT Amiga Prime or one of Next Level Racing's, you know, uh, higher up aluminium profile offerings. So I think that's all fine for the price point. You just need to know it does it so that you can go, do you know what, that's all right because this is all I can afford or justify. Or you might go, do you know what, I don't want one that has this flex and, and movement. I'll save up a bit more money and I'll buy a more solid rig. So it's just really for you to know. As far as the wheelbase goes, again in use, I didn't notice any sort of movement. If I'm sat here and I try and move it side to side, there's nothing really happening from a side to side point of view. And maybe there was a, a tiny little bit I just see here, but again, I'm being stupid. You don't apply that much. Forwards and backwards, we're not really, so the, the front of the, okay, so it is kind of pivoting at this joint here. The front is lifting up just a little bit, and if I push it forward, it will go down into the carpet a tiny bit. With aluminium profile rigs, I always get carpet sink, but you, the whole rig will move. What we are seeing here is it pivot where it joins in the middle. Again, this is very, very minimal though. I mean, the steering wheel's creaking. I don't know if you'll hear that because of the force I'm having to use to do it. So a bit unrealistic. I'm just demonstrating, you know, how solid or, or or flexible it can be, you know, if you do give it those extreme forces. But otherwise, forwards and backwards, fine. Left and right, definitely solid left and right. And in use, like you see in that footage, perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. So I think for the money, and comparing it to the art, which is its literal pound for pound comparator, it's a difficult choice about which I would recommend. I prefer the look of this. I even prefer the way the seat looks to some of the GT Amiga seats but there is definitely less adjustment. There's no height adjustment for the seat. There's no pedal tray adjustment. There's no integrated monitor stand that you can buy as an add-on, just slot in for sort of 50, 60 quid. Um, what else? Shift amount is, a, is equally as rigid on this as it is on the GT Amiga Art, so no real issues there. And if anything, I would say like the wheelbase area is perhaps a little more rigid than the GT Amiga Art. That is really quite solid on this. Oh, and the pedal tray, Again, that doesn't really have any, any flex in the pedal tray. That brake pedal felt very, very solid, you know, underfoot where those two bars run. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, you don't put that much pressure on your throttle or your clutch anyway. So pedal tray, very solid, no movement until you press so hard that obviously you lift the middle of the rig up. So I think overall what we've got here is your typical entry level cockpit priced accordingly, performs accordingly. And if you like the way it looks, the seat, the cockpit itself, then by all means, pick one up 
Uh, if you prefer the look of a more box section type cockpit that has a little more adjustment, then the R is the way to go. And if you look at either of those and you go, do you know what? I'm not happy with the flex in the wheelbase on the R. I'm not happy with the way this one lifts up in the middle. Um, you know, or the seat, or I want pedal tray adjustment, then you can save a bit more money and you can go a level up to something else. But I think for its price point, for its entry level nature, it performs, you know, exactly as it should. A couple of peculiarities with those wing nuts on here. I mean, they don't, they haven't come loose in my testing. The seat hasn't moved, so the wing nuts do work, even if they are a bit of a strange choice. So yes, for the money, it does exactly what it needs to do, which is perform as an entry-level cockpit. I think really that's how we can summarize this. So there will be a link in the description if you prefer one of these over something like the Art. Um, as always, there's a small discount there. So uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. I hope it's been helpful. And as always, take it easy.